What's up guys, welcome to another episode. Today's video is gonna be all about taking those action shots to the next level using Flash. So we're at the Tour de Gila here, we're doing the crit races. We got all these pro bikers just flying by. Here comes a huge pack. Hold on a second. So on Friday's video, I talked about how to do panning for action photography, and today we're gonna to take that up a step. So we're gonna be doing panning on top of using the flash. So if you don't know how to pan, or if you missed that episode, make sure you go check that out right here, and you catch up on how to do the panning. And then now we're gonna combine the panning techniques with the flash. So I'm gonna go through with you guys my setup on how I'm doing the flash, and what it's gonna to take to light these guys up proper like. So it doesn't matter what flash you have, and for this type, the great thing about it is you can leave it on camera. Normally I don't like to shoot with my flash on camera, but there's one specific reason why I'm doing that today, and that is so I can get second curtain shutter speed. So second curtain means that the flash is gonna fire at the end of my shutter speed instead of the beginning of the shutter. And that's really important for helping to freeze motion, especially because we're gonna be working with shutter speeds that are down to like 20th of a second, 15th of a second, uh, well below freezing motion and the only way you can do second curtain shutter is if you have your flash attached to your camera body so just like in the last one with panning there are no exact settings that are gonna help you uh, nail it every time for every scenario you're just gonna have to come out here and piddle so right now I'm gonna go ahead and talk you through what I'm at I'm at f11 and I'm at 80th of a second right now ISO 100 second curtain shutter and basically I'm just kind of balancing the light that's external, which is the sun, with the flash, and I'm gonna light the inside of the riders as they come by, because they're gonna be really shaded. So here's a couple shots at F11, 80th of a second, here they come. So that's pretty good, actually. There's a little bit of a motion blur there, but what I wanna try to do is I wanna see if I can get a little bit more motion blur. So now I'm gonna drop it down to 30th of a second, and I'm gonna up my aperture to about f16 or so and we're going to see what kind of stuff we can get with that so again this is trial and error and it's going to take the key here is to do that panning with your flash and to follow through with that pan this will help make sure that you have the steadiest motion in your movement and that your camera lens is following the biker's relative speed or your subject's relative speed through your frame that's the most important part here just like panning so here we go 30 for the second so that one was a definite mistake there. So 30th of a second is really slow, even with that second curtain shutter. And what happened was I moved my camera too fast relative to the biker's speed. So that's why the bikers look like they're super blurry and not everything else. And that's the exact opposite of what you want. So it just takes time to get that right panning motion with your camera to match the speed of your subject. All right, let's go find a better spot. All right, so that was the last lap, had to act quick there. So I wanna talk one more thing about power real quick. So I don't let the flash choose. I don't shoot an ETTL for this. Uh, you probably could, but I choose to shoot in manual because I don't want the camera deciding how much flashlight to put out. So right now I've got it at half power and that's good for the recycle time so that when the big pack comes in, I can get at least, at least three shots off for the big packs and uh, that's also good for balancing the light and uh, not making them look too ridiculously popped. So uh, I shoot in manual mode. Oh, hydrate. All right, we're back at the car. I had to get some water. All right, so sorry about the chaos. The crit races, they're really quick, so you gotta be on your toes. A little difficult to shoot and film, but anyways, we're back at the car. We got a good break now, so let's recap. So let's talk about some of the stuff we went over. So uh, again, this is all based on the panning technique and being able to get that motion blur and then add that flash to fill for dealing with the harsh light. So we're out here in the middle of the daytime. So the flash is really gonna help make that light pop. So the flash is definitely gonna make your subject pop against the background and make them nice and illuminated and when they would otherwise be in super shadow. It's also just a stylistic choice. It's just a style that I enjoy doing with my action photography, and uh, I think it just kind of helps give it that little extra bit of pop. So flash, on camera, second curtain shutter, 
I do manual exposure and I usually, I mean, even in bright daylight like this, I still only need about a quarter to half power. So I'm not gonna go over the other stuff about the panning and the autofocus and all that because that's in the other video that I did uh, last Friday or if you're watching this sometime in the future that's in the panning episode that I just did so you can check that out for more details on how I deal with autofocusing and panning and all of that stuff and then the last thing I'll mention is if you're doing shots like this you're definitely gonna want a wide-angle lens so I'm shooting with my 16 to 35 and I'm shooting anywhere between 16 and 24 millimeters really for especially when they're ducking in and just like in the panning episode I mentioned I just can't stress this enough the key here, even with the flash and second curtain shutter and all of that, it's really important to follow through with your movement and follow and match your subject's relative speed in your frame so that you can get that nice in focus tack sharp subject and create that motion blur at the same time. So I'm going to wrap it up here. If you guys have any other questions about anything that I went over or didn't go over concerning how to use the flash with the action photography, leave those in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.